Ohio approved and licensed for disposal. At Ron Evans Enterprises, they specialize in sewage system installation and repair. Ron Evans has a full line of flex pipe, culverts, concrete, and plastic septic tanks, sewer fittings, water line rolls for the Home American water heaters, along with toilets, standard, and ADA. It's all at Ron Evans Enterprise, LLC. Give them a call today at 1-800-537-9528 or 740-286-5930. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance, then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the rainy day morning show right here on Main Street TV, where it is blacky outside. The April showers have arrived a little early, haven't they? Yeah. So like yesterday, we had all the doors open at the tap room and had our friends at Callahan Hardware delivered us some picnic tables for the front and all of this fun stuff, and then you wake up to this. Right, it's just I tell you what, what, that's all you needed to do. Put out the put out the spring summer stuff. That's and then what this I told what you Jamie. Get. I said <laughs> I, you're exactly right. I said we're going to have them deliver these picnic tables, and it's going to snow. I just know it. Well, <laughs> no, it's not quite that bad. Not that bad, but yes, of course, it's our fault that it's raining this morning, probably. But uh, anyway, it tis the season. It's spring, and you just never know until you stick your head out the window what the weather is going to be like but it is blacky today yeah it is and uh, it's not going to be real cold but not real warm either and it looked like uh you know got a good chance to get rain kind of almost through the whole day yeah so i don't know yep that's the way it goes take your umbrella with you but but we are so glad i mean most of us are always glad once we flip that calendar to march we know it can't be too bad from then on yeah, or for very long we're, we're in the right direction let's put it that way and of course, all of this rain uh, will make the grass grow. So, you know. Right. Exactly. But. I, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's talk some news here. Um, uh, Governor DeWine was very close to Jackson County. He wasn't in Jackson County oh. yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he did make a couple stops to make grant announcements uh, in both Gallia County and in Athens County. And we're going to focus on his trip to Athens County because there is a local tie here okay. to Jackson County. Uh, he spoke uh, very late in the afternoon at Athens High School, and it was about uh, a grant that has uh, that has been awarded through the Appalachian Community Grant Program, and the part of that that is called the Appalachian Children's Health Initiative. Mm-hmm. Now, this Appalachian Community Grant Program, the announcements were supposed to start officially yesterday. There were actually some that came out on Friday. There's some we think that haven't come out yet because not all the money is accounted for. But uh, the announcements that the governor made yesterday, and he was three places. He was in Loveland, which is a Cincinnati suburb. He was in uh, Gallipolis, and then he was in Athens. Wow, that's a lot of traveling. Right, a lot, a, a lot of traveling, but all <laughs> good, all good news. Uh, money through this Appalachian Children's Health Initiative, which is money uh, to improve the children's health in Appalachia. Yes. And the stop in Athens uh, was a, was to announce a mobile vision care program that is going to affect some school districts uh, in the Athens area and also in the Chillicothe area. And one of those districts that will benefit is the Wellston City School District. Oh, awesome. Uh, altogether, uh, more than $500,000 is going into this. Two different providers, one out of Athens, one out of Chillicothe. They will split up, and there will be um, a Warren Local, Chillicothe, uh, Unioto, 
Adena, Athens, and Wellston will all benefit from this. And this vision care, this mobile vision care program, uh, providers will travel to the school districts where these mobile vision clinics are. Uh, you know, they won't be there all the time, but they'll be there certain days, I think. Okay. And they will deliver what is described as school-based care during the academic year, which will result in over 2,300 eye exams in these six school districts, Wellston being one of them. The mobile eye exam equipment will provide comprehensive uh, eye exams and diagnose any vision or ocular health pro, uh, issues. The program will eliminate the barrier of transportation to a local air ca eye care provider mm -hmm. and the general lack of eye care providers in the regions being served. That's amazing. Now, that's something, if you're older and you're getting served and you have insurance or you have enough money for eye care, you kind of take that for, for granted. Sure. But remember, it's just not the initial diagnosis that is important. It's continuing care because, you know, your, your, your vision changes. Yes. And uh, I did not know this, but I had been told uh, through a couple of other programs that's benefited this area that there is a deficit of eye care services in the schools, for, uh, partic particularly for families who would have trouble affording okay. eye exams and glasses. Listen, and, you know, how do you expect kids to learn if they can't see properly? I mean, hello. No, that's that one of that, the first that that is a real step. problem. And and if you're a kid, and you know maybe you're even older, uh, a preteen or teen, you might not want to admit that you're not seeing because you don't want to wear glasses. That's you know that's a a, a, a vain thing, but it's that it's true. Definitely is a thing. And then like I know, for example, in my case, I didn't know I couldn't see. I was in the same boat. Uh, uh, at being a W and they put you in alphabetical order, that puts you at the back of the room. Sure. And, you know, I'm struggling to see You're the like, green board or the blackboard up there. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, she's not writing clear enough or he's not writing clear enough. Yep. And it was because I was nearsighted. And you know what? I didn't know I was nearsighted. Yeah. And I was pretty nearsighted. You I don't. got the glasses on now to prove it. No, and that's exactly right. And um, so my story is that I was sitting with my mom at the shake shop when she owned the shake shop. We were just sitting there talking one day and I was a little, little girl. And, you know, Ponderosa was right there. And mm -hmm. she said something about what was on the Ponderosa sign. And I said, I don't. I, how do you see that? Mm -hmm. I, I can't see it. She said, you can't see that sign. And I said, no. And immediately we went to the eye doctor and yeah, I couldn't see, but yeah, you don't know. No, you, you didn't know because you know, your, your vision, uh, is, when it's not, uh, you know, 2020, sometimes it's very, uh, you get used to not seeing 2020, sure. you get used to 50, 50 or whatever. And then, you know, it may slide a little bit and it's something that you just don't notice. And then you put on those new lenses and like, like oh my it, gosh, it, this it, whole world opens it, up. It, it, that's exactly right. That's how I felt when I was. 12 years old and I got the glasses or whatever. Yep. And we Same. had to, we had to take everybody, you know, calling your four eyes and all like that. But you know what? That was okay because you could see, you know what? Yes. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it's all, it's all okay. Did, um, uh, so yeah, so this is wonderful that the kids have that opportunity to, to have eye care. Right. And this is a, this is a, you know, big project. Money well spent. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, Hayden, I don't know. Do you did you find the picture there from over at Athens High School? Uh, a, a lot of the local folks did go over there. Uh, Dr. Brian Rao, who is the superintendent of the yeah. Wellston City Schools, was there. Uh, the Wellston, some Wellston City folks were there, uh, including uh, well, Mayor Anthony Brenner. Uh, Make Wellston Beautiful uh, president, and also Wellston City Councilwoman Tammy Phillips was there. Wonderful. Cecilia Plummer was there. She's a big Make Wellston Beautiful uh, leader. And uh, Roby Browning, who has connections with the city and the schools, as he's a uh, assistant principal at the middle school, he was there as well. Uh, Jackson County Commissioner Paul Haller was there as well. It's amazing. And, uh, and uh, uh, the picture, we will, we will have it in the paper, but they posed there with uh, Governor DeWine and very happy to do it. And uh, I'll give uh, Governor DeWine credit. Uh, you know, now you can't be the governor, you can't be the president, you can't be the county commissioner, the mayor, uh, without taking criticism along the way. Sure. But one thing that we can say about Governor DeWine is he gets out. He gets out. He is in his 70s now, and he's very, very mobile as far as getting out 
announcing things. And sometimes, you know, it's not always nice things where he's going to. No, and you're exactly right. And and the one thing that I'll give him credit for as well is that they at least recognize that we exist down here. Right, exactly. He's very good about that. And, uh, he, you know, it takes a lot of people, took a lot of tax money, you know, which we all gave. Uh, legislature had to not fight it. But uh, he was the one who announced more than a year ago this $500 million pot of money to um, to uh, support a lot of good projects in the 32 county area of Appalachia. It's much more than just southeastern Ohio. It stretches almost all the way to Cincinnati and all the way up to Youngstown, but that is all considered part of Appalachia. And so uh, it's appreciated. We think that there's a lot of projects. Yesterday was supposed to be a big red letter day, a big reveal day. We know that not all that big pot of money has been accounted for, just a chunk of yeah. really less, far less than half of it. And so a lot of the folks uh, in, in our local governments are still waiting to see whether, you know, the projects that they applied yes. for have been funded. Uh, they haven't been told they haven't. And so, you know, their Correct. fingers are still crossed. But uh, all these ones that were announced yesterday were part of uh, this Appalachian Children's Health Initiative. Now, the other project that affects Wilson, Governor DeWine was not there, but this information was put out on this as well. This was um, for a mobile health clinic. Uh, that will be uh, provided for by the chillicothe based Adena Health System. Uh, they, will, uh, they will be going around to these uh, different school districts. Uh, the number of school districts that are involved, in, in addition to Wellston, are uh, the Unioto District, Greenfield Exempted Village, Ross Southeastern, Waverly City Schools, and Zane Trace. Most of those are in Ross County. Okay. But uh, the, mobile, the mobile health clinic uh, will go there, and that will be another place for students. I'm not sure about adults, but That's students for awesome. sure, students and staff to get on-site medical care. Cool. At least you know, uh, you know the, at least the the main things. Um, it will um, there will be a full-time nurse practitioner, a driver a registrar, one full-time community health worker. They will all be part of this mobile health program, and I presume that they will go around to each of these six school districts that are involved. And so they will be on site. I'm not sure what the schedule will be, how often they will be there, but this is all in the works. Um, I'm not sure um, that might be a picture from somewhere else, uh, but that is basically what it's gonna be, the Adena Mobile Health. I cannot identify where this picture was, but you can see from the sign behind Adena Mobile Health Clinic, yeah. this is what Adena does. Remember, there is a, a bricks and mortar health clinic in, in the Jackson City Schools yes. that opened more than a year ago, and that has been a big success there. Uh, you know, most of these districts are like have a school nurse, maybe even an extra person involved, but you can be overwhelmed. Uh, and, and, you know, the public can go into the health clinic. Uh, the bricks and mortar health clinic at Jackson Middle That's School. That's what I was going I'm to not, ask. I'm not you. Exactly, is that uh, open to the public, or some, is it just students? Uh, the one in Jackson, it it is open. I mean, it's primarily for students and staff, but you can call and make appointments there. Oh. It's another way to get cool. health care through Adena. Yeah. And uh, you know, they figure that it is a good partnership, good for Adena, good for the public, and good for the schools. And so. Um, uh, you know, especially during the flu seasons and all like that, you know, the, the volume of kids that maybe need to be seen. And sometimes they come to school and they're okay, and then they're not okay yeah. because, you know, they get something when they're right. at school. Uh, it can be very important. So um, these two grant announcements that were announced yesterday, one out of Chillicothe and one out of Athens, uh, the Wellston City School District uh, 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 got a hit on both of them. They will have a mobile health clinic at, on the Wellston City Schools campus whenever this takes effect, and they will also have the mobile vision care clinic as well. And awesome. remember, there there was a grant program. Uh, Make Wellston Beautiful was involved in it. Tammy Phillips was involved in that. She does so many good projects out of Wellston. Um, a, a, a state project uh, that was, uh, I know this, the Ohio State Treasurer was involved in that too, and that was where optometrists went during the summer to the schools, Vinton County and Wellston. They went to both places, Wellston, for two years at least. And the number of kids served and the, and the number of kids then that needed served, they determined, really underscored the need for vision, more vision care. Yes. 
And, you know, it, you, you know, you count the optometrists in Jackson County. I think I'm right on this on one hand. Yeah. Oh, and, I would think and so. And so, you know, we got lots of sets of eyes in Jackson County. A lot of them are young and they have not been diagnosed if there is a problem. Like you and me. Yeah. You don't didn't know, know they, there's a problem. Don't, don't know they have one. And that yeah. can really hold you back, of course. Of course. All right. So that was the good news yesterday. And that will be, of course, um, uh, prominently uh, reported uh, in our Wednesday edition of uh, the Telegram. Hey, we talked about, you know, Mason Malone last week, uh, the Jackson Middle School student who won the regional hoop shoot. We talked yes. about the Jackson competition cheerleaders. Well, guess what? The Oak Hill Band and Choir went to Universal Studios in Orlando. Okay. And this was a fun trip, but it was also a business trip because, you know, they sang, played, and competed. Oh, and wow. And they could not have done better. Um, we have several pictures. This is one you can see the big Universal globe behind, so yeah. you know they're really there. And uh, as you can see, this is a good-sized group of kids, band and choir from <laughs> Oak Hill lot. High School. And... Uh, all they did when they were there, this they went last Thursday and they got back late yesterday afternoon. All they did, Jennifer, was on the choir side, they had the first place choir. The choir earned a superior rating. Taylor Simpson, a member of the choir, was named the outstanding vocalist for the choir. And the choir was named the overall best choir among all categories. You're kidding. So I don't know how many were there. That's Taylor Simpson. That you, is You can awesome. see why she's happy there, you know, raising her fists in triumph. Uh, the band also did very well. They won a superior rating, and in their category, they were also first place. So congratulations wow. to Bryce Warrington's band. Congratulations to, to uh, Brittany Kugel and her choir. And uh, here are the kids uh, dressed in their Oak Hill T-shirts at Universal. And if you can look towards the front row, uh, some of those kids are holding three or four different trophies that they Love earned that. there. So we will have some coverage in our uh, Wednesday paper. And, uh, you know, it's great that our kids from Jackson and Vinton counties get to go on these trips. And, uh, you know, the, the band, the choir, the ball teams or whatever, and, you know, because they go to other states, uh, they compete. It's a great experience. They see new places and like that. Uh, you see more and more of that. A lot of it has to be fundraised. Of course, it's not the school footing the bill totally for these things. So um, speaking of travel right now, these are the ones I know of. I'm probably leaving somebody out. The Jackson High School baseball team, the Jackson High School softball team, and the Wellston High School baseball team are all in Myrtle Beach this week. Awesome. So this is break week for a lot of the schools because of the Sounds Easter break. Fun. So, you know, uh, it's a vacation, but it's also a business trip, so as to speak. I know that the Wellston baseball team is one and one so far. The Jackson baseball team won their first game. The Jackson softball team won its first game. These are regular season games, even though they're far they're away far from home. Away. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, Todd Compton was up very late last night, uh, rounding up some of these early ball games. The spring sports season is underway. Saturday, I think, were the first games. And so we'll have some reporting on that in our Wednesday paper as well. But congratulations once again to all those very Oak Hill kids good. for how well they did. That is awesome. Today is a very important day on the uh, political scene in Vinton County. Uh, the Vinton County Board of Elections is meeting as we speak. They are conducting what they call the official canvas. The official canvas is where, uh, you know, you, you count all the ballots that were not counted on election night in the primary election. You have to do this within two weeks, I think, after the actual election, whether it's a primary, a special election, or the general election. Now, in Vinton County, why this is especially important is that we had that one race for Vinton County Commissioner, the Democrat nomination, where there was one vote difference between uh, the top two candidates. Lynn Harold had 145 votes. Um, Michael Fee had 144 votes. Yes. So Jeffrey Fee, Jeff Fee had 144 votes. And the Michael, that's Betts, was really not very far behind in third place with 131. One vote difference. Now. When they count the votes uh, for the official canvas, they've already counted most of them, but there's what they call provisional ballots that are not counted on election night. There's 18 of them. Now, all of them may not have voted in this race, and all of them certainly didn't vote in the Democratic primary, but some of them may have. Also, this is a number that we didn't know, and they will only know this morning as they open those envelopes that came in the mail. There were late, late arriving absentee ballots. This because is going to get wild. You, you could mail them as late as election day. So, you know, I mean, they have to wait 
those ballots are going to come in the mail, the people that waited to, to mail them late, uh, all the way through the week. I hope they've got them all now because this is when they're doing the official count or the official canvases, as it's called it. We are going to get that information just as soon as we can from Melissa Hale and the Benton County Board of Elections uh, up there in MacArthur. And if the results uh, don't change, let's say it stays a one vote difference. Now, it probably won't because there are some votes, no doubt, that are going to be cast for that race. If, it, if the margin of difference, it's not the number of votes, but it's the percent. If the margin of difference between those top two candidates is less than one half of one percent, there will be an automatic recount. Okay. It'll be paid for. It's automatic. It doesn't matter whether anyone wants it or not. Who knows? We might have a tie even. But if there's an automatic recount, that will have to be scheduled too. Melissa Hale is, and some of the people at the board in Benton County are fairly new. They've never been through something like this, so this is important for them. <laughs> Thrown too. to the wolves, right? <laughs> but you know, we hope to know sometime today and be able to put that news out on how that affects that vote. If you're wondering, uh, it doesn't. When you don't have a lot of votes, it doesn't take very many votes to affect the percentage. Right now, that one vote difference between um, between uh, Lynn Harold and and Jeffrey Fee is 0 0.19, 19 hundredths of, of a percent. If it's 0.50, you know, 50 hundredths of a percent, that means there'll be a recount. But all it would take would be for Lynn Harold to maybe get two more votes and go up by three, and I don't think there would be an automatic recount. Isn't that wild now, that just few votes make a difference? Now, I understand also that candidates, when it's close, or I'm not sure what the criteria is, the guideline is, you can request a recount as well. Okay. And in the past, I'm not sure because election rules always change. If it's not an automatic recount, you may have to pay for that work. Has, but have you, you have the ever, right to request. Do you remember ever a recount changing the vote? I think I do. Really? I mean, there, uh, we oh, it's, it's a lesson. It, it's an old bromide. We keep hearing it, and people get tired of hearing it, but it is so true. Your vote makes a difference. It definitely. How, many, you know, how many times have we had ties or one vote? you know, difference or whatever. It, it, it's happened. It's happened. I, I can times. remember it happened in Jackson County. It's happened not too long ago. I wish I could remember the names and, you know, some of our listeners. A lot of times have, it comes may have with remembered issues as well. too. Right. And this does, this seems kind of crazy, but it, but it's also, um, it's also true. Um, what they do if, if there's a tie, if there's a tie after a recount and, uh, uh, that can be flipping a coin. That is the yeah. main way. There's another way that you're allowed to do it too. And I forget. Rock, paper, scissors. Um, I'm not sure that's it, but that could be. I mean, I mean, deciding whether someone's going to be the the county commissioner or the mayor, a coin flip. But you got to you got to break the tie somehow. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's probably better than having another election. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll be waiting uh, that news uh, from Benton County as well. Okay, we'll go to the criminal justice and the law enforcement front. Uh, this was a, uh, I didn't know whether you knew this, Jennifer, or not, uh, but there was a high-speed pursuit in Jackson County on Friday night. No, late, I missed that. Late Friday night, all the sirens were wailing. Uh, it started out in the city of Jackson, and it went uh, into uh, Milton Township near Wellston off Mulga Road is where it ended. It all took place in about less than a half hour, believe it or okay. not. Okay. There were actually two different pursuits involved, but it involved the same suspect. Uh, Tyler Irvin, uh, oh, because it was man. a two-part pursuit, there is Tyler. He is now in the Jackson County Correctional Facility, and it was really unlucky for him. It started off in Jackson, and he was able to get away at first, all right, in the city of Jackson. But... Uh, after he got out of the city of Jackson, the patrol was, you know, kind of watching. And when he came out on State Route 32 towards Wellston, he must have still been speeding because the patrol got behind him then. And at that point, it ended uh, a little bit later. He turned on the Mulga Road. And Mulga Road has a bridge replacement project going on, by the way. Okay. And he went through some road close signs. He didn't, you know, go down into the hole because there's no bridge. But he tried to go around where they have a temporary road, went into a private lane or driveway, is what I was told, and hit a tree. Now, uh, he was not injured. He did complain of a headache later on. He was checked out at uh, Holzer ER. 
uh, but he checked out cleanly and whatever. He didn't have like abrasions or anything like that from his car hitting a tree, which, you know, that's usually not good for the car uh, or no, the driver. No, when Not you normally, yeah. Because trees are pretty tough. But uh, he now faces charges from both the Jackson Police Department and the State Highway Patrol. Uh, in the city of Jackson, uh, he was clocked going 64 miles per hour on Athens Street. That is a city street that where is a 35 mile per hour speed limit. And uh, uh, they chased him out of Jackson. He went out Morton Street, and they thought he was going as high as 80 on Morton Street. That's not good. That's Morton Street heading out of town on 93. He turned yeah. off on 35 on the exit eastbound, like going towards uh, Rio Grande. And the police were after him, but his car was actually outrunning the police. He was going 110 miles per hour, according to the police, 110 that's and, not and, good. And, and the police vehicle or vehicles just couldn't keep up with him. They called the sheriff's office out and they looked for him because the last time they saw the taillights was he was turning on the Broadway Pattonsville Road exit. And so they went out Pattonsville Road a little bit. They went into the city and they lost sight of him. But they had a description of the car. I don't think they knew who he was right then. I'm not sure about that part. But... Uh, the patrol was advised that, hey, we had this speeding car. This was the last place we saw it. And apparently he was still speeding out on State Route 32. And this was uh, this was eastbound on 32, not on 35, but 32 eastbound towards Wellston. Oh, he's all over the place. And at some point, uh, the patrol got after him on 32. He turned on the Mulga Road, and then it ended up with him running into this tree. The charges that he faces uh, are... Uh, in Jackson, he's charged with speeding, driving under suspension, and fleeing and eluding. The patrol is charging him with OVI, meaning that they believe he was oh. drinking or under the influence, left of center, and fleeing and eluding. So because there were two uh, agencies involved and there were part one pursuit, part two, he's got charges from both. So it ended up not really working out for him that he was able to evade the first pursuit. So we will watch that one. You know, there other than the, his car running into a tree, there wasn't any other instance with other vehicles or anything. All right. Uh, we want to tell you about um, uh, a development in Vinton County that's positive. Okay. Uh, the Vinton County Convention and Visitors Bureau has announced that it has named its new executive director. That position had been vacant for several months while they looked for somebody. They have found somebody, and it is a local girl. Uh, or local young woman, Amanda Boring. I don't know whether that name means anything to you, but she was an honors graduate from Vinton County High School uh, in 2020. There is Amanda right there. She graduated, I think, late last year from West Virginia University uh, with uh, a major in journalism and a minor in Spanish. And she had a marketing job, I understand, uh, in Pittsburgh. And was uh, I don't know whether she was still living in Morgantown or not, but she was actually already employed. The CVB contacted her, or she contacted the CVB. I'm not sure how that worked, but Saturday it was announced that she is the new executive director uh, for the CVB. Now, a lot of counties have CVBs, but this is considered a big deal in Vinton County because they are trying to capitalize on the potential for tourism. Yeah. Remember, look at our southeastern Ohio map. Vinton County already is a great outdoor spot. Sure. All right. Well, it sits right next to the Hawking Hills. Yes. You know how many people come to the Hawking Hills. Yes. Well, there's things in Vinton County that rival the Hawking Hills, and it's right over the county line. Exactly. So especially in the northern part of the county, they are trying to generate tourism, bring people to Vinton County. One of the projects that she will take on is the renovation of the Hotel MacArthur, which will be a trendy place, as well as preserving history, in downtown MacArthur where folks can stay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were able to talk to her uh, over the weekend. Uh, Red Thompson Jr. also did an interview with her. That'll be more in depth, but we will have a story in our paper on Wednesday about her getting the job. Uh, seems to be a very delightful young lady. Uh, she says her biggest goal will be to drive more traffic into the community while keeping the small town atmosphere. Yes. You know, that'll be a little bit of a challenge. You don't want to seem like it's too commercial. I know. You One have of to the do draws big city is, things, but in little little town <laughs> right you know when people get away you know you, you need to have things that attract them Event, charming events activities charming. restaurants all those things yes. entertainment 
but you also like that small town feel even as a visitor. And if you live here, you don't really, you want the economic development and the good things that come with it, but you want, you know, I think people like the small town atmosphere as well who live here. So, you know, she is very aware of that. I think she's going to be very receptive, being a native of Vinton County and a graduate of Vinton County High School, she's going to be very aware of, you know, what the natives and the residents want as well as trying to build the tourism. But uh, we'll hear more from her and have that story in Wednesday's, uh, in Wednesday's uh, uh, edition of the Telegram as well. Cool. That's awesome. All right. Uh, some other things that we want to uh, talk about. Um, we want to mention this was uh, covered before in the Telegram uh, and on the radio. I'm not sure we talked about it on television, but um, you know, a lot of times, you know, arrests are made, indictments are made, and a person is, uh, uh, you know, they say this, but sometimes people convict people before they should. You are innocent until proven guilty in sure. a court of law. Well, we had a case where a woman was indicted, charged with felonious assault, that case has now been dismissed. Okay. And, you know, we want to tell you about that as well. We okay. have an obligation to do that. Yeah. But uh, uh, on January the 31st, a case filed in Jackson County Common Pleas Court against Samantha Simpson of Wilson was dismissed without prejudice. That does mean it can be refiled, but it was dismissed. Uh, the case involved the alleged assault of 37-year-old Jennifer L. Spradlin. She was the uh, supposed victim here. Yep. That was way back about a year ago, yep. more than a year ago, on March the 19th, 2023, outside a resident in Glenroy. It was quite a story at the time, you know, a, one woman a, a, assaulting another and it being serious enough to where um, uh, Jennifer Spradlin had a pretty serious eye injury as a result, uh, bones broken around her eyeball. Okay, as a result of that incident, Simpson was indicted by a grand jury with one charge of felonious assault, second degree, went through the court system, uh, was taking a while. Well, just at the end of January, on the last day of January, uh, the prosecutor allowed that case to be dismissed. Uh, Simpson's attorney, Robert K. Toy, submitted this statement, and that's going to be in the telegram as well, okay. as we you know try to tell the whole story as it unfolds. He said, our defense in this case was that Miss Simpson acted in self-defense when the other party came on to Miss Simpson's property. Mrs. Simpson was simply defending herself. Mm -hmm. So it turned into, even though there was, you know, uh, a fight, um, there was enough evidence there uh, that it was a self-defense situation mm -hmm. as opposed to a, uh, an attack, mm. I guess. So we'll have that story in the, uh, in the telegram as well. All right, uh, the Vinton County National Bank uh, put out a statement on social media that affects the bank, but I'm sure that uh, other banking institutions have been affected by this. And this is another one of those scam deals where, uh, you know, you get a call and somebody is purporting to be somebody they're not, in this case, the bank. And uh, the, th this happened enough. Uh, this was put out by the bank. I'm not sure it's out of a certain bank in the Vinton County National Bank system because we have, of course the home bank in MacArthur, and we have, uh, you know, a bank down here in Jackson and, you know, other places in Southern and Central Ohio as well. Sure. But uh, this came off their Facebook, and we helped get the word out. It's also out on our website, and we've had it on the radio as well, and we'll share it here on television because, you know, maybe somebody has experienced this and they have not heard about this warning. But how it happens is someone calls uh, claiming to work for Vinton County National Bank. Uh, they ask immediately, hey, you know, we're the bank, and maybe they know you're a customer, maybe they don't, I don't know. Okay. But they want your account number and your social security number, all right? <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> but remember, they say they're the bank, so it's kind of tricky, okay? They say that they're the bank. If they leave a message, uh, if they leave a message, it will sound authentic. You know how sometimes the scammers, if they don't get through to you, they just won't leave a message right. or whatever? or you hang up on them and they don't, they, they give up. Well, they will leave a message and they will leave, uh, they will leave uh, a, they will answer the phone as Vinton County National Bank when you call back that number, by the way. Oh, they give wow. you a number. It's not the bank number, but you don't, some, some people may not know that sure. because, you know, big institutions use more than one number. It may come from a certain extension or whatever. Right. And then they proceed to ask for that personal information again. If you answer those questions, you will give these scammers vital information they need to access your bank account and your money. So I know we've 
told you things like this before, but this is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, as opposed to somebody claiming to be the sheriff or the court or the IRS, this is somebody claiming to be the bank. I can promise you that I can't think that there's a bank in the world that would call you on the phone and ask you your personal information, considering they should already have that. Right. Exactly. You know, you it, know what I mean? Like, right. At the, at the, at the, I mean, even if it, even if it would be really somebody from the bank and you have to even know them and, and you know, it's on the legit, um, what you need to do, if there's any doubt at all, before you give information like that is yeah. call back to the bank. Yeah. On, call the bank on, on the call main the person number, you know. Right, call somebody yeah. you know. And if this does happen, you should, you know, let the Vinton County National Bank know because they will put this information out. They need to know if this is continuing. Yes. And they want to know how widespread it is, and they want to, I'm sure, prevent somebody from being defrauded. Uh yeah, absolutely. It's it's a nightmare for everybody involved. Right. Okay. We got a couple of uh, business stories out of Wellston to report. Okay. These are recent ribbon cuttings. Uh, so uh, Hayden, if you can tee those up, the first one involves uh, the new Faith and Fitness in Wellston. Yeah. Okay. The Faith and Fitness in Jackson. A lot of the ladies know about that. It's right downtown where Abbott Home Healthcare used to be. Yeah. And uh, Josie Rader is a local resident who does so many good things. She's she kind of the wheel there. And that is the picture. You can see how many people came out for this re recent ribbon cutting at Faith and Fitness. But it was on March the 14th. It's at 108 East 1st Street in Wellston. So it's in downtown Wellston. And this will basically be a Faith and Fitness operating in Wellston. There's one that's very popular in Jackson. And this is, a, 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 I think I'm not using this word wrong, unique, it gets overused, but I don't know of any other, uh, I don't know of any other business like this that combines fitness with faith. I mean, it's well, right. it's well it's named. It's very unique. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it is. And, um, uh, it is, uh, it, it, according to their description, it combines the worship of Jesus Christ with holistic exercise of the body and mind it is one of the region's rapidly expanding initiatives. They now have visitors. They now have clients from Jackson, Oak Hill, Dayton, Amelia, Chillicothe, Oxford, Westchester, Lucasville, Waverly, Portsmouth, Piketon, Galpolis, Circleville, and now Wellston. I'm not sure how many uh, faith and fitness there are in all those locations, but that is where they're getting their customers from. Absolutely. And uh, there, the city, um, here, there's an interior view of the faith and fitness in Wellston, and um, that will be... Um, they are sharing the space with Daisy's Hometown Coffee, if you know where that is on First Street in Wellston. Okay. This is the Wellston branch of Faith and Fitness, and Miranda Lawhead uh, is operating that uh, for Josie, and Amanda Robinson is the fitness instructor. Very so cool. So you, you might want to check that out. Love that. All right. Another ribbon cutting that took place a few days later uh, on Monday the 18th was at uh, Caleb's LLC Sports and Trophies. This is the former Brodigan Sports and Trophies uh, on 7 South Ohio Avenue in Wilson, just about a block there from Faith and Fitness. And as you can see, there was a big group out for that. In the middle in those green shirts are members of the Caleb's family. Uh, Rick Caleb's and his wife, Anne Marie, uh, are the owners and proprietors. And they've got their two sons, Jay and Brian, very active in the business as well. Here they are with an interior view there. Yep. Uh, I had not been to Brodigan's for a while. Uh, of course, that's uh, uh, Gary Sparall, who had that for um, 20 years a or so. A few years, we'll say right, that. <laughs> right, right. And uh, this business was in good shape and all, but uh, for professional reasons, uh, he works at Kenworth, too, I guess. You know, it was just a little bit much to do all that. But uh, Rick uh, is very well known in Jackson County and Wellston. Of course, uh, he was the EMS chief in Wellston. He worked EMS in Jackson County. He was a Jackson police department uh, officer at one time. He was a pool manager out at Hillcrest Pool at one time. Yep. He's on the Wellston Fire Department. Uh, now he's a big time volunteer uh, because he's a paramedic at the Grace Clinic yes. there in Wellston. Yeah, which and is another cool thing. Anyway, I will say this. I was up there personally to cover this ribbon cutting. And I'll tell you what, they are loaded down stock wise with clothing. You know, the, 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 the sports jackets, which can be turned into letter jackets very yes. easily there with, uh, with some lettering put on them and embroidery. Uh, of course, they do the trophy work up there. Uh, they have a lot of 
shirts. They have a lot of uh, localized uh, clothing, you know, for the local sports teams, Wellston, Jackson, Oak Hill, Benton County. They're in downtown Wellston and they're proud of it, but they consider their market to be Jackson County and Benton County. And uh, they are going to, Mr. Caleb said that they're going to rotate uh, their inventory and their display with the seasons. So, uh, you know, okay. they've got a lot of clothing. That's the big thing. But on the sporting goods, the equipment and like that, you know, you can expect to see baseball and softball out now. That would probably. make sense, wouldn't it? Football yes. and, and, and the other thing, soccer in the fall and the basketball, uh, wrestling, you know, in the winter and like that. Okay. They want to, they, they have got a lot of room. Uh, they've got an upstairs area, I think for stock as well. I'm not sure. I don't think that's open to the public, but, uh, I was I was surprised at how much they had in that little store. It's actually bigger than you think when you go in there. That's awesome. And the store hours are going to be 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to noon on Saturday. It will be closed on Sunday and Monday. Uh, they have a very active Facebook page. Uh, Rick, who is also a webmaster, he has a business there that he does that as well. Yep. He's He's got a website created, a platform at least. He's going to build on that. He wants to do, eventually do an online store as well. And uh, he, uh, he also uh, is on Instagram as well. Uh, and so uh, uh, we, we uh, invite you to check out both of those. And in all those cases, uh, the public and the business officials are supporting it. In Wellston, the Jackson Area Chamber of Commerce, there isn't a Chamber of Commerce in Wellston anymore. Okay. There's a Main Street. But the Jackson Area Chamber of Commerce was at both of these ribbon cutting events. A Jackson Mayor Randy Evans was there as well. Wellston Mayor Anthony Brenner and other Wellston city officials were there. And so, you know, they're getting a big boost from the public and civic officials as well at these new businesses. And Jennifer, being a businesswoman yourself, you know, especially when you start out, it can be a little dicey. It, it, definitely. <laughs> you got to you, you got to get started. Yeah. And you got to build your business, even an existing yep. business yep. where, you know, you're a successor. So, you know, we urge you to go out and see these businesses firsthand and give them a try. Absolutely. And you don't mind me saying buy local, do you? No, not okay. at all. All right. Please do so. All right. Well, this seems like a strange time to say it, but I'm going to say it because it is an ongoing danger this month. Not today, maybe, but uh, <laughs> you really have a threat of brush fires in the month of March You're and right. April because, you know, uh, it, we haven't totally greened up yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the weather can be dry. Uh, at times we have sieges of, of dry weather four or five days in a row. Um, as we said, it hadn't greened up yet. The wind often blows. And that really makes brush fires and trash fires um, more possible. And we're just not talking about out in the country. Many people don't realize that there is a statewide burn ban uh, that is in effect March 1st through the month of May. And uh, you cannot, let me see what the rules are. Um, in the state law prohibits open burning in unincorporated areas during the month of March, April, and May, also October and November, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So, you know, this idea of, you know, burning out in the daylight, you know, when you want to, you really can't do that. You can wait and do it very early or you can do it very late. And even then you need to control it. Now, in the city, it can get scary. In quick. the city, the burning laws can be even stricter. So that doesn't mean that you can just do it yeah. in the city. This this applies. This is a state law applying to all the areas where there isn't municipalities. Right. So, you know, be careful on that. And Some of the have, cities just flat out say no burning at all during certain times. Right. And I tell you what, um, one of the things I always remember about the open burning, because, you know, most of these brush fires that occur are caused by man, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I mean, they just don't start out. I mean, lightning can start a fire. But um, the late Marvin Deck, who was a Colton fire chief many years ago, he's, he's passed now. Uh, I remember as a younger newspaper man, there was a bunch of brush fires all over the county and in the Colton area. And, you know, I asked him about the calls and everything. And he said, well, somebody threw a cigarette or something. He said, squirrels don't smoke. That was the, <laughs> That's that, a fair statement. That was how he explained it. So, all right, let's congratulate a uh, we're talking about public service. Let's congratulate Judy Bartow up in Benton County, okay. Madison Township of Benton County. She uh, will end, at the end of this month, a 24-year period as the township fiscal officer. 
And uh, they had their last scheduled meeting uh, just uh, earlier this month. And Judy, Judy, uh, they had a party for her. And uh, Judy uh, is moving out of the township, so she couldn't continue. Okay. Um, she would have continued probably because she loves to do it. But uh, they always had good audits and all. Uh, I think we maybe have pictures there of Judy Hayden, if you can find that, uh, or one anyway. But Judy was uh, congratulated by the Madison Township trustees uh, for her work over the years. And uh, the township fiscal officers, they used to be called clerk treasurers. They, at their term doesn't actually start at the first of the year. It starts April the 1st. So if you oh. were elected fiscal officer okay. in one of those odd numbered years uh, in the general election, unlike the trustees who start in January, you don't start until April. That's to ensure a smoother transition on the fiscal books because there's lots of work that's done right at the end of the year and to throw a new person in right at the beginning is, would be tough. So I oh. think that's, that's the science behind that. But anyway, uh, we've already had that story in the paper. It is online. We appreciate uh, Red Thompson Jr. for going up and covering that. All right. Uh, we also want to congratulate another lady here in town who we know very well, Susan Rogers. Yes. Susan uh, has been active in a lot of very important mm -hmm. social service positions. She has a heart as big as all outdoors. And so she looks for those type of jobs and they look for her. Her most recent job that she's taken, and this is fairly new, this does not affect Jackson and Vinton County directly, but it's in the area. She is the new executive director of the National Alliance of Mental Illness of Southern Ohio. Okay. That serves five counties. I think she, her office is in Chillicothe. And uh, she, in her position, she is addressing, uh, you know, this problem of mental health illnesses. And this is something, you know, a can of worms that's been opened much more here in the last, thankfully, in the last five or 10 years. Yes. A lot of times it was considered if you had mental health problems that were diagnosed, you know, uh, well, you're not strong. Um, uh, you're not. Uh, or you're making it up. Yeah, you got, or, you're, you're, yeah. you're too emotional or something like that. There is Susan right there. Uh, she, as you can see, she's a very cheerful person. Yeah. And she takes great heart in helping people. Uh, she, for many years, was the director of the RSVP program, mm -hmm. which manages volunteers here yes. uh, in, in the area, including Jackson County. And she was also with Integrated Services for a while, which is another social service agency. But that is her new gig. And we congratulate her on that and wish her the best. All right. Uh, we want to um, also congratulate. Um, if we talked about this before, I'm sorry, but he deserves the credit. Rodney Smith. You remember Rodney? Yes. He uh, was, he'd been with the, uh, the Jackson County Democratic Party as a leader for many years. He's been the chair for many years. Uh, most recently, he was on the elections board for many years. He was the chairman at the time of his retirement. He retired from the elections board at the end of, uh, at the end, at the, at when the primary was over in 2023. And he, uh, he had an 80th birthday party just uh, a week ago, Saturday. Aww. And um, they had a big party for him. His family members came. Two of them are far flung. Uh, Randy Smith came from California where he lives. And um, Shannon Orender came uh -huh. from Florida where she lives. Okay. And uh, Andrea Smith. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the Andrea. Uh, let me get that's her name. Andrea Davis. Yep. It used to be Smith. She's the youngest. She was here in Jackson. She kind of put the whole thing together. That's awesome. And a lot of his Happy former, birthday, a lot of his former coworkers and colleagues were there from the Democrat Party and from county government and the elections. And of course, here in this building, uh, Rodney retired uh, yes. after uh, being a longtime uh, technician uh, on the furnace side, yep. on the on the heating and cooling side. He was very good and did it for a long time before he retired. We do want to remind you that uh, this weekend, it's going to happen a little early. Don't let it slip on you. It's Easter weekend. It is. Can you believe it? It, it is arriving. Uh, good Friday is uh, Friday, of course. And some local government entities, not all, will be closed. That will affect... On Friday. On Friday. Oh. So that could affect garbage service. Now, in Wellston, uh, we'll throw this out because this is going to hit you tomorrow if you live in Wellston. Wellston has a four-day work week. They don't normally work on Friday, but that is a holiday, so they're going to be off Thursday. Okay. Because they're off Thursday, the people who have garbage service on Thursday are going to have it on Wednesday. Oh. So get that garbage out tomorrow. We're trying to let people know, you know, on TV, on the radio, and in the paper. 
and then some of the governmental entities, more than not, will be closed on Friday, but not all. Of course, Easter falls on Sunday, so that doesn't affect service. But the ones that will be closed uh, on Friday uh, will be uh, the village of Colton, uh, the village of Oak Hill, um, city of Wellston is already closed on Friday anyway. Jackson County governments will be closed. Hamden Village will be closed. Uh, Vinton County offices will be closed. The BMV, uh, you know, which is under okay. the, the local clerks of courts, they will be closed in both Jackson and Vinton counties. Open will be the city of Jackson. They'll have regular garbage service and also the village of MacArthur. It will be open okay. on on uh, Friday. And if you want to see that list, uh, we have it online at the telegram, uh, news.com. And of course, we'll have it in uh, Saturday or in, in a Wednesday's paper as well. All right. It's Easter weekend. That means there's Easter egg hunts. Yay! It's, it's kind of like the trunk or treat in October. There's so many more Easter egg hunts. There used to be, you know, two or three biggies. They still have those, but now a lot of other people are doing organizations, churches, etc. There is a long list. There were a number of them that took place last weekend, as a matter of fact. Well, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't have a list of the Easter egg hunts. Uh, and we'll have those. Uh, in, they are online on, in the paper. We are updating that list for Wednesday's paper. But a couple of them that are coming up that are really big, uh, Compel Ministry will have one in the lot in Wellston. Uh, between across from Fruit and Piggly Wiggly beside the Family Dollar Store. That's on 2nd Street. That will be on Friday uh, at 1 p.m. So fun. And that is uh, the kids from Wellston High School uh, who are stuffing the candy Easter eggs for the Sons of American Legion Easter egg hunt, which is one of the biggest. It is huge. That is on Saturday, the Sons of the American Legion. That will be... Uh, out at the uh, Wellston Recreation Parks, the ball fields there. And it's just not one ball field. It's more than one because there's so many kids. Yep. But they have stuffed 12,000 eggs. You can see why they needed the kid power to, to help with that. 12,000 eggs, and that will start at noon, and that is on Saturday. And uh, also the Jackson Area Kiwanis Club will be doing a big one as well. It will be, um, it will be let's see, that will be 1 p.m. Saturday at Manpower Park. Okay. And there's a bunch of eggs there. I think at least eight thousand. I could I could be uh, selling it a little short. And the Kentucky Colonels chapter of Southeast Ohio helped the Kiwanis stuff those eggs. I know oh, that cool. firsthand. So a good service project there. Uh, also another big one worth mentioning: the Liberty Baptist Church in Oak Hill does a community Easter egg hunt in Oak Hill. They wanted to do it last Saturday, but you know the weather wasn't very good. Oh my gosh, was it windy and cold? Yes. And so they made a decision and pulled the plug on it, and they're going to have it this Saturday as well. Okay. It will be on the grounds of the Oak Hill uh, Village Building there on Front Street, okay. uh, and that will be at, um, let's see, that will be at 11 a.m., and they uh, will have a bunch of eggs as well, as well as uh, some prizes and handouts as well. So kudos to all those organizations uh, whatever organization they are that does these Easter egg hunts, it is a big deal to get ready for. They usually count on donations from the community and make it happen. But uh, I tell you what, the the old family Easter egg hunts and Easter baskets used to do, you really don't have to do that. Just go around to several of these things. That's and right. And you'll have more candy than you need. Exactly. All right. So once again, that list will be in our paper uh, on Wednesday, and it's already posted online, and it will be updated. All right, Good Friday services, uh, community Good Friday services are planned both in Wellston and in Jackson. In Jackson, it will be at the Jackson Nazarene Church uh, at 7 p.m. on Good Friday evening. If the weather allows, they're going to do something called the Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m. It's weather permitting. Okay. I, I wish I could tell you what that is. I'm not prepared on that. But I, I know it's something... I, that, other churches and organizations do it in conjunction with Easter. I know it's something that's outside normally. So that's why it's probably a weather permitting thing. But the service will, itself will be at 7 p.m. And Pastor Mark Erskine of the Nazarene Church will be bringing the message. A free will offering will be taken and divided among the Jackson Food Pantry, the Jackson Homelessness Committee, and the Good Samaritan Fund. And even though it's at the Nazarene Church, this is a community uh, Good Friday service that the Ministerial Association organizes. They just rotate the sites around. 
That's awesome. In Wellston, the Wellston Ministerial Association is inviting everybody to its Good Friday service. This is earlier in the day. This will be at 12 noon at the First Baptist Church on South Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, the service is designed to coincide with the common working lunch hour and will last for one hour. So even if you're working that day, this should fit into your schedule. An offering will be taken for the Ministerial Association's Wellston High School Scholarship Fund. So uh, all those things happening uh, this weekend. The Oak Hill Festival of Flags is coming up on uh, Memorial Day weekend. They've already announced their entertainment. Right around we'll, the next we'll have to quarter. announce that later because I didn't commit it to memory. <laughs> but if you want to be an Oak Hill Festival of Flags royalty member, they're going to have a meeting for you. So this is very important to hear this out. It's going to be on Sunday, April the 7th. That'll be a week from this Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Bingo Hall, the Madison okay. Jefferson Bingo Hall in Oak Hill. And they have two, they have different levels, different age categories of royalty. Uh, girls ages five to 19 uh, are in these categories. The little miss is ages five to eight. The junior miss is ages nine to 12. The teen miss is ages 13 to 15. And the miss is ages 16 to 19. I guess you would call that the queen. Yeah. But there are four different age divisions there. And uh, if you have uh, uh, your little girl or your bigger girl wants to be in those, uh, this is the meeting to go to for information. Okay. It's an informational meeting and a question and answer meeting. Felicia Walls is kind of running that. She is on the Festival of Flags Committee. Uh, and once again, that is on Sunday, April the 7th. All right. Also, um, the spring is coming, and so it's very important for these big cemeteries in Jackson and Wellston. They always do a cleanup. Yes. And also, they got to start mowing yes. if they haven't already started to mow. But what both of them want you to do, uh, the city of Wellston at Ridgewood Cemetery, the huge cemetery on the hill in Wellston, and Fairmont Cemetery, the huge cemetery on the hill in Jackson, That's right. is if you have your winter decorations, you know, spreading over on those grave lots, you need yep. to remove them because it's mowing time. And also, they're probably weathered anyway yes. because of the winter weather. Uh, in Wellston, they are asking that you uh, pick up, uh, they're asking that you uh, pick up uh, the grave, uh, the grave decorations uh, that are old, uh, they'll probably be thrown away if you don't do, if you don't get rid of them yourself or you don't put them on the stone or something off the lot at least. Right. But you have to do that no later than Sunday. That's March oh, the 31st. This Sunday. It's coming up. Okay. And, get to it. Right. And in Jackson at Fairmont Cemetery, the drop dead date, pun intended, is Monday, April the 1st. Monday, okay. Monday, April the 1st, day. you have, must have items removed by Monday, April the 1st. All items remaining on that date will be removed of and disposed of. So don't get mad. We told you in advance. That's right. All right. Let's see what else we can tell you because we're running out of time real quick. I think, don't we have the Apple Queen contest this weekend? Yeah, yes, I should tell you. I saved that in case we're going to go on the news later, but it, okay. is, it is this weekend. I'll tell okay. you that. 7 p.m. on Friday for the Little Queens contest. Yeah. And uh, there are, I think, 48 little girls there. Okay. Uh, Katie uh, Katie uh, Jones will be the uh, mistress of ceremonies okay. there. And the 48 little girls are from Jackson, Wellston, and Oak Hill. And, of course, they pick 10 finalists. Yes. And then they have the final contest during the Apple Festival. Then on Saturday, I uh, always hate to say the big, the big <laughs> Apple Festival because they're not all big. They're all the queen. They're all lovely girls. 12 girls from oh, Jackson okay. County, Jackson and Oak Hill. I think they're all from Jackson and Oak Hill this year. And they will be trying out. And by the way, in uh, Wednesday's paper, thank Jeremiah Shaver for doing a lot of work on this, uh, clearing the deck so we could publicize this. We've got pictures and profiles of the 12 girls who are trying out for Apple Festival Queen. And we also have a companion article on the same page listing the little girls and their parents uh, for uh, that contest. Very so good. all that information in the paper. So of course, you have all the skinny on that. Of course, we will throw it online as well. A very a nominal cost to attend those contests. They're both at the Jackson Middle School Auditorium, the Little Queens uh, on um, Friday night, and the uh, older girls on Saturday evening. Okay. And on Saturday evening, I mean, we will know who the 2024 queen is. We won't have to wait till the Apple Festival. They will name a queen and two attendants. And it will be the swan song for the 2023 Apple oh, Festival, no. including, it's always including, better including Queen Abbey plants. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see if there's any last thing I need to tell you about real quick. I don't. I think we've covered the have-to stuff. 
Oh, we want to tell you that the Jackson Bow Hunters Whitetails Unlimited Banquet is this weekend. Yes. I think we're going to have a guest in later. Oh, we already did. Oh, that was yep. yesterday. Oh, last week. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, that's a good cause, of course, and that's at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the Canners Cave 4-H camp. Um, tickets will be available until this Friday, so it's not too late to go. If you want to buy tickets, contact Kenny Moon, 740-418-7404. Once again, 740-418-7404. And do not forget Basketball Mania. That's our contest that That's coincides right. with the NCAA March Madness. You know, we've gone through the first week of games, the first two rounds. Yep. We're down Super to exciting. 16 teams now. And in our Wednesday paper and online as well, you can see the standings. We have always hundreds of people that enter that. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can exalt or you can weep at where you stand, but you can don't see how you bad. stack up. If your bracket's busted, so does everybody else's. So don't worry about it. That's right. How many, how many people thought Kentucky would win oh, that first game? That's just a given, except right. for it wasn't. Right, it wasn't. I, I, that's that's Sorry, why JJ. That's why they play the game. That's right. You All right. So anyway, I apologize. I ran three minutes over. Oh, no, you're actually one minute over because we're two minutes fast. OK, well, OK, you're I didn't know, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, thank you so much, Pete, for hanging out with us this morning. And uh, again, take your umbrella with you today if you go outside just so you won't melt. Because we know you all are so sweet out there, so. right? And we thank we thank Hayden for uh, yes, thanks Hayden for running the computer over there behind the scenes. Always does a wonderful job. That's right. Okay, well, we will be right back here tomorrow. Have a great day, and we'll see you then. Bye bye. This just in: the Telegram News has a new website, thetelegramnews.com. Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, thetelegramnews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. Thetelegramnews.com. Subscribe today at thetelegramnews.com. Check it out.